y'all. Welcome back to Poplar Creek Farm. Today I am doing something that I do every single week, which is make my family's homemade um, sandwich bread. We make, it's white bread um, from the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. I use this recipe. I've been using it for uh, probably a year or two now. I tried it some initially um, and I wasn't super consistent with making it, but now we don't buy bread most for the most part. Every once in a while, if we run low on bread and I just don't have time to make it, we'll buy a loaf, but for the most part, we just make our homemade bread. So typically I make it every single week. Um, and like I said, it's just the white bread recipe, but I'm gonna show you guys how I do it um, and how it's worked really well for me and my family. My family loves it. They make sandwiches most days for their lunches um, and it's gone really well. So first we're gonna start with two cups. I use bread flour. Um, it does just call for all purpose flour, so you can choose regular flour. I choose to use bread flour. Um, and I use King Arthur brand specifically. It's a really high quality flour, and I have really good luck with this. Um, this one's almost empty, so that's why I got a second one out. So I'm gonna put two cups of flour into my sand mixer. You don't have to have a sand mixer. You can just do this by hand. Um, it's just easier if you have a sand mixer, but again, not necessary. I didn't have one for many years. Now mine is used every single week. And you will notice I am not a perfect measure. I don't measure out exact. You know, I'm not like leveling it off, clearly. Um, and that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. This recipe is actually pretty for forgiving. The only thing that I've ever noticed that like makes a major difference in the quality of my bread is if I heat the milk up too much, which we'll get to in just a minute. Um, if I overheat that, then I do have a problem. So two cups of flour, then we add our yeast. Now I buy yeast in bulk. This is like a big, it's like a brick, um, has how it comes. I get it from BJ's. Um, it's one packet of active dry yeast, which is two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And I store mine, initially I store it in the freezer until I'm ready to open it. Once it's open, I store it in the fridge. It just lasts longer. So we're gonna put two and a quarter teaspoons. And again, I don't take a quarter teaspoon out. I just measure out a quarter-ish with my teaspoon. And then we're just gonna mix this together. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and head over to the stove and do the milk part. All right, so in a small saucepan, we are gonna add two and a quarter cups of milk. It calls for buttermilk. I don't use buttermilk. I'm actually just using lactate. Um, that's what we have in the house. And normally it's 2% or skim, but all the store had this week was whole milk. So it'll work. So two and a quarter cup in here. And then we're gonna turn the heat on low, um, or like a medium to low heat. Again, you don't wanna overheat this. We're gonna add one tablespoon of butter. And now the recipe says you'll know it's warm enough when the butter starts to melt. Um, but I have noticed if I wait till the butter starts to melt, it gets too hot and then my dough is all mess messed up. We're also gonna add two tablespoons of sugar to this and also add our salt. I just do regular granulated white sugar. And salt, but I just kind of scoop and add it in. I can normally tell it's warm enough just by feeling it. Um, if it feels nice and toasty warm on my finger, then it's good. All right, so now we're going to pour the warm milk, um, butter, sugar, and salt into our flour and yeast mixture. Mix it on low for 30 seconds. Now we're going to beat it on high for four or three to four minutes. Okay, so now we're going to add the additional remaining flour, which is anywhere from three and three quarters cup 
to four and a quarter cup of additional flour to the two cups that's already in here. Um, some people like to use a spoon for this part. I actually just still use my mixer and I just pour it in one cup at a time. Um, typically I have to add three and a half to four cups. is where I take my rings off as best I can. Sometimes I can't get these ones off because now we're gonna knead it. So we're gonna lightly flour a clean workspace. Just go with our hands. Now I could use the kneading um, hook for my mixer, but I don't like it because I like to be able to read my dough um, by kneading it by hand. That's how I can tell if it's gonna turn out well or not. So right now it's sticky, but it's not all kind of clumped together yet. So that's why we're gonna, in kneading, we're gonna get it all mixed in together. And we're gonna knead for about six to eight minutes. Once you're done kneading, you want your dough to have kind of a smooth top um, and nice and formed. Your gluten is nice and formed, so it's stretchy. That's about where we want it. Now we're going to put it in a lightly oiled bowl and keep it covered for about an hour until it doubles. Its All right, so it has been an hour and it has about doubled. So we're going to initially punch it down. That oil sounds gross. <laughs> then we are going to split the dough evenly-ish. I never can do it perfectly even. It always ends up, yeah, that one's smaller. Whatever. Now we're going to let this rest for 10 minutes. Then we're going to put them into pans and let them rise for another 30 minutes. All right, so the dough has rested for 10 minutes. It just allows the gluten to rest. Now we're going to form them into loaves. So on the bottom, you're going to pinch it together and then kind of push the ends and pinch those in. And so there you have your loaf. And then we put it in the bread pan. Again, pinch the bottom together. And pinch the ends in. And stick it in the pan. You can split it and have like a split top white bread or you can leave it like this. It's up to you. Um, I do it both ways. And now we are going to let this rise for 30 minutes um, covered with a tea towel. Also at this point I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 375. So these have been rising for 30 minutes and now we're going to pop them in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. I typically find as long as the oven is fully preheated, 35 minutes is plenty um, to cook these thoroughly without overcooking them and drying them out. All right, so the bread is done now. Nice and golden brown. One of the ways you can tell it's done is and it's nice and hard and sounds kind of hollow. And we'll go ahead and let these cool um, for about 30 minutes before we cut into them. All right, so the bread has been cooling for a good bit and now we're gonna go ahead and cut into it. This um, is a perfect little uh, bread cutting board that I use. My uncle made this for me and I love it. Um, and then I always use like a bread serrated knife and I cut in the middle, I don't cut the ends. We always cut from like the middle out. I don't know, just the way we cut it. But it slices really nice, it doesn't squish. And there's your bread. And you can cut a nice slice. 
It's still a little warm, so it's still a little soft. But And obviously you can see there's some folds, but it still works perfect for sandwiches. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Remember, we're growing today for a better tomorrow. Please like and subscribe and join me on the next one. Mm -hmm.